But the only thing that the truth can hurt is a lie. And when you find yourself on this journey of life and, and, and this journey of self-awareness, when you find yourself receiving information and getting offended, you should really take notice then. Yep. You should take notice because whatever that is offending, you need to audit. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow. I got a little lightheaded on that one. Yeah? Yeah, a little bit. That's kind of odd. I want to take a sip of that water. Yeah. <laughs> take a sip of that bulletproof <laughs> coffee over there, buddy. <laughs> Make you sweat a little. Give you, this some, give you some good fat. This is episode 101. 101. Sales Wolves 101. Welcome Sales to class. Sales Wolves 101. <laughs> Everybody get year. out your syllables. It's a new and year. Well, not syllables. Syllabus. Syllabus. <laughs> syllabus. Everybody get out their syllables. <laughs> what Wait. are syllables? Those are like letters, aren't they? I put, yeah, I put the oh, wrong emphasis yeah. on the so, wrong syllable. Get out your something. syllables. Get out the get syllables. Get out your symbols. It's Sales Wolves 101. Oh, no one We're said headed. sales will has to be smart. Nobody had to be driven. ever said that. And mm. that's a good thing for you <laughs> and me, for sure. Uh, oh, man. So What are we going to talk about this episode? Truth. Be truth. honest. It, be honest. Be honest with me. Be what honest. Talk about? We're going we're gonna to be honest and talk about the truth. Um, you know, I was, t- I was thinking about this year, and you hear people say, the truth hurts. And and I was really thinking about that and I went, well that's that's a lie. The truth never hurts. The only thing the truth cannot hurt Tyler. The truth cannot hurt Joseph. The truth cannot hurt you. The only thing that a, that the truth can hurt is a lie. And the reason that we think the truth hurts and why that's such a a cliche saying that people say is because when the truth shreds a lie that you're believing, you get offended. Mm-hmm. You get offended. I've been there. Yep. I've I've heard the truth in certain areas of my life, and I and I went, you know, it made me angry, mm-hmm. made me frustrated, and I thought, well, you know, nah, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. But the only thing that the truth can hurt is a lie. And when you find yourself on this journey of life and, and, and this journey of self-awareness, when you find yourself receiving information and getting offended, you should really take notice then. Yep. You should take notice because whatever that is offending, you need to audit. You need to audit that because it's quite possibly 99% true that you're believing a lie and that's why it's offensive, mm-hmm. right? And, and the thing about the truth is it's so fascinating. If you, if you equate it to light and dark, if you equate darkness to lies and truth to light, and you have a pitch black room that you're in, if we blacked out all these windows and, and this was pitch black, you can't see your hand in front of your face black, right? And I just flick a lighter or a match. Mm. Darkness flees from it. That's what happens with a lie. The smallest of truths can shred the most elaborate of lies. But in no circumstance can we have this light room and me introduce just a little lie, a little bit of darkness, Mm. and it overcomes the light. In no no way. It It never happens. It's impossible. And so... The truth doesn't hurt anything but a lie. Truth can't hurt you. And so that's why this journey of life and in self-awareness and, and becoming the best version of you, that's why in that journey, when you're dead set on that journey, you get offended a whole lot more than, than other people. And you take note of those offenses and go, okay, what am I believing? What, am I, what, have, I, what have I hung my hat on 
that is actual, you know, that's that's really a um, that really just means I have a firm grip on an empty sack. Let's open that up and look into it and go. Oh, I've been believing a lie about myself, about my situation, about how I operate. What do you think, Tyler? You're exactly right, and, and this is big because number one. There's physical hurt, there's emotional hurt, but I think oftentimes in regards to what we're discussing here, discomfort is seen as either a physical or emotional hurt, when discomfort is just discomfort. Right. So we're relating hurt with actual pain. Mm-hmm. Oh, when, I just thought of something. Yeah. Don't forget what you were saying. Yeah. Usually when you get offended, like when the truth hits you and you get offended, one of the first feelings, like you have emotional feelings of anger, frustration, whatever, Mm -hmm. but one of the first feelings is alone, Hmm. is you feel alone, like it's only me, it's Mm -hmm. me against the world, nobody else is going through this. One of the first feelings is loneliness, and that should be a telltale sign, okay? Uh, Cameron Haynes said something, you can tag him on this. Um, he said this. I, I just started I, following him recently. I love him, man. Mm-hmm. He's incredible. Him and Coggins work out together. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. Is that him that was walking out of the ocean, that picture of him walking out of the ocean with that um, shark over his shoulder? Yeah, dude, he's <laughs> he's an animal, man. I love him. It's inc- it's uh, incredible. Yeah. I think that was him. I think he might have just posted that picture. I think that picture was from like the 50s. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is something he said that struck me with that alone feeling. When you feel alone, that's a telltale sign you're believing a lie. Because it says, make friends with pain and you will never be alone. Hmm. And that goes right hand in hand with what we're talking about. And the discomfort that it takes, the pain that it takes to go through um, Hmm. this self-awareness and the accepting of the truth to shred those lies inside you. Hmm. Does that make sense? It does. And we talk about so much. If you guys have watched uh, or listened to the Sales Wolves podcast for any period of time, you've heard us say embrace discomfort a thousand times. But if you think about that as embrace the truth, because we're not saying that the truth isn't going to be uncomfortable. It may be uncomfortable. Right. But the only time, what we're saying is the only time the truth is going to hurt you is when it is hurting the very lie that you have been hinging your decisions on. Like the, yep. those lies that you've been basing your life on, those lies that you've been telling yourself in order to live this comfortable way. So like a lie of saying, like, like even just when you look at like work ethic. Okay. So work ethic. If I have this lie that I've been telling myself that, that what I've been doing on a daily basis, the amount of effort that I was putting in that that was enough, then if all of a sudden I'm called out on that, if you're saying like, Tyler, you need to work harder, like you're not working hard enough, you're, you're not working hard enough to do this job. Well, I've been believing this lie that I have been working hard enough, right. and all of a sudden when, when anything's challenged like that, it creates friction, which is gonna come out as, like I'm gonna take offense to that, Right. I'm gonna be upset, there's gonna be emotional pain. Mm-hmm versus living in truth is the exact opposite. And so when we talk about embracing discomfort, we're just talking about embracing anything around you that may cause the discomfort. Yeah. And that means embracing truth. Uh, my wife may be the best person at this ever because she'll tell me things often about myself. Yeah. And I'm like, that was mean. She's like, no, it was true. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and usually it's something like insignificant, like it's something about like my hair or like like shoes I'm wearing or something like stupid. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, does this look all right? She's like, no, it doesn't. I'm like, well, that's hurt. said that really quick. Like, that's that's kind of mean. <laughs> like, I'm just being honest. <laughs> She'll say that all the time. I'm just being honest. I'm like, just because you're being honest doesn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a, another avenue for us to take this. Uh, which is something that, um, honestly, I don't know a lot of, honestly. Honestly, I don't know a lot about, but I've been learning some on this law of first truths. Yeah. And and we may have mentioned this before in previous podcasts. Uh, I did a podcast on the Breadwinner podcast with a guy named Caleb Campbell, and he talked a little bit about this. But 
those lies that we've been telling ourselves or those lies that we believe, chances are they didn't just happen today. No. Like chances are they've been lies that have been ingrained in us for five, 10, 15, 20 years, maybe our entire life. Yep. And so some of these truths that come out, the ones that are maybe the most painful or the most hurtful or cause the much the most discomfort are the, are the ones that are challenging the truths that go back to when we're a child. A child. And the interesting thing in, in this process that I've gone through in, in understanding this law of first truths, which again, like admittedly, I, I, I'm not an expert in, but it's given me a lot of compassion for people that when they are faced with, with truth, mm-hmm. that you're not, like, let's just take a basic example, racism. Right. If Joseph doesn't like a particular race of people, yep. well, chances are it's not just Joseph that one day woke up and was like, I hate those people. Right. Chances are there was a time 20, 30, 40 years ago, yep. and it gave me a lot of compassion to think about, well, okay, I, I don't necessarily hate this person for thinking that way. But man, I hate for the fact that they went through something 20, 30, 40 years ago that led to them believing this way. So there was some point where that person was driving down the road with their dad and they looked over and they saw a person of that race and their dad said, hey, we hate those people. Yeah. And that four or five, six year old said, okay, okay, we hate those people. I don't really get it. I don't know why, but we hate those people. We hate those people. And then over the course of years, that was just ingrained into them to where now, 30 years later, they just hate those people. Yeah. And the law of first truth sets a frequency mm. inside the person. Okay. Mm. So if, if that exact scenario, we hate those people, that five, six year old goes, we hate those people. Then what happens is the universe does what it always does. It provides you the evidence you set your frequency yeah, with the true. we hate those people and and the universe then provides you the evidence to continue in that hate mm. it provides it for you yeah and so then that five six year olds 45 years old 50 years old and they can look back and they can go well yeah we we hate those people because i mean this happened to me this happened to me mm-hmm. this was proof this was proof this was proof yeah and that's where the truth, and that becomes an elaborate lie inside of yeah. them. Whereas the very same thing, if that would have said, we love those people, it would have been the exact same progression in the completely opposite in the exact end opposite. result. That's right. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Literally could have seen the exact same things play out over time, but because of the connotation of love versus hate, would have seen it in a different light. Completely different. Completely different perspective. Hmm. And... That's fascinating. Take it, take it health-wise, right? Mm-hmm. You take somebody that has a fat and unhealthy mom, a fat and unhealthy dad, fat and unhealthy grandparents, fat and unhealthy um, siblings. Uh, you take all that. Mm-hmm. And early on, they hear things. We're, I mean, we're fat. We're big-boned. We, we, you know, we whatever, all mm-hmm. these lies. So they start believing a very simple lie early on. I am fat, mm-hmm. right? And so no matter how much they work out or how many New Year's resolutions they make or how much weight they lose at any given time, you will see those people, uh, the universe will hand them the scenario to snap back and become fat Hmm. because the lie they believe is I am fat. So until the truth steps in, and, and somebody on this will, will send a message and go, well, I have a thyroid problem. I have this. Mm-hmm. I have that. I have a heart condition. I have all yeah. these things. And all you're doing is supplying the evidence to believe the lie. Mm-hmm. And the universe is handing that to you. It won't change until you believe the truth of I am fit. Mm-hmm. Remember Tom Shea talking about that? Yeah, that internal and that dialogue. internal dialogue. But that all of those internal dialogues, every, everybody that talks about that, a lot of them don't understand that it's anchored in an early lie they started believing, and then they re-anchored it, 
in the evidence that the universe provided. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, and, and I don't know what that process looks like, and it kind of here's my, the end of my knowledge on, on the law of first truths. Like, like, I don't, like, I know that in order for that person to get past that lie, that they're going to have to go back to figure out where it came from, right. and they're gonna have to unpack that scenario yep. in order to break through because otherwise you're going to have what we have rampant in our country, which is just a bunch of this, this person believes this, this person believes that. It's friction. Yeah. Because um, so lies, lies love to create drama and, together. And, back and, and lies, and the defense, it's, it's always defense. Like it's always defensive. Um, no one's really having conversations. They're just defending their point. Right. And there's this fallacy, like this, this absurdity that like the louder I speak my lie, the more truth, it the more true it becomes. Like, right. like the louder I yell, the more valid my, what I'm yelling is, which is ridiculous. Right. But that's, but that's what you see. Like that's what you see in the media is, is just people getting louder over here, louder over here as though the volume of their voice makes what they're saying more true, which right. is ridiculous. So I don't know what that process well, I mean, if you um, take that kid, is like. If, if, you, if you take that kid, this scenario that you came up with mm -hmm. racism, yeah. if you take that kid back to five, six years old with his father, mm -hmm. okay, that, that, that father anchored that lie in that child by saying, see those people, see what they're doing, they're, they're doing this and this and this. That's why we hate those people, mm -hmm. okay? So legitimately, he may be looking at that ra or those examples of that race, mm -hmm. and they legitimately may have been doing the wrong thing, Sure. right? Well, if you go back as a kid to that exact scenario and you speak the truth into that scenario and you go, I don't judge those people on their race, creed, religion. Mm -hmm. I judge those characters on the content of their character, mm -hmm. not on the I was born in a different socioeconomic mm -hmm. place or, or yeah. whatever it is, right? And maybe the best way to kind of round that out is by saying the only way to defeat that first truth is to go back to the first truth, which is that you were born in the image of God, right? meaning you were born on purpose, with a purpose, and specifically designed exactly the way you were for a reason. Right. And so if, if that's the truth for me, then it's the truth for you. It's the truth for this person of this color, of that color, of that th ethnicity, of that social economic. If, if we go back to the very, the very first truth and just believe that and see everything through that filter, filter or through that lens, then, then maybe that will help people to overcome well, whatever be, those things are. It'll redefine that law of first truths. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll, it'll, you'll see where the lie was and the truth will actually shred those lies. Mm -hmm. and, and the universe will then show you and give you example after example after example of the truth. So what would you say, kind of to close this out, are some, so if someone feels like, in a situation they, they feel offended, if someone is presented with you know, a, an opinion and they take offense to it, like what are some of those things that people can start thinking of, of, of like, oh, maybe this is an indicator that I'm actually believing a lie and not living in truth. What would some of those like indicators or examples be as, as people kind of go throughout their normal, normal well, day? Well, indicators are, are the things that we talked about. You're offended, you feel alone, anger, it brings on um, frustration, those kind of things, because those are all friction, yeah. friction things that, that, um, that are indicators of a lie you're believing. Now examples would be, I mean, I you, talked about the the, main, you talked about the weight one. I would look at the four main areas of your life, like yeah. from health, mm -hmm. I would look at relationships, yeah. I would look at personal growth, and I would look at money. Yeah. I would look at business. That's what I was gonna say with money, and I think that may be the best way for us to end on that example, 
is those people that grew up where money was looked at a certain way. Like a lot of, a lot of families that looked at money as those that have it somehow got it in some you know, I, shady I way. And, and that if someone is wealthy, then that means that they must they have stepped done, on people. That, they yeah, did they must something have, dirty to get it. Exactly. Whatever. Um, and you can look and find examples of that. Sure. But I look around at the other CEOs I know, the entrepreneurs that I know, and they're some of the most loving, philanthropic people that I've ever come across in my entire life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you come to the conclusion that money is neither good nor evil, when you come to the truth that it's neither good nor evil, it takes on the spirit of the possessor. Mm -hmm. And so I, I hear people you know, they'll go down that vein that you just talked about, about, you know, if you got it, then, then you did something shady to get it. Mm -hmm. Or they'll go down this vein. Have you ever heard this? They'll say, um, they'll say, well, I just need enough to be comfortable. I just need, mm -hmm. I, I can't see, that's excessive to, to want to have a million, two million, three million, five million a year in income. That's excessive. I don't need all that. Mm -hmm. I don't need all that. But what those people have believed is that they don't deserve all that mm -hmm. because if their money took on the spirit of them, then it would go to no good. Mm -hmm. And so, and so as I came up through that thought process, and for me, it I had to break that, I had to break that those lies with the truth that no matter how much money I made, no matter how big the goals were that that money that I made would take on the spirit of the possessor and I would do good with it as opposed to evil with it. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would treat it with the respect that it deserves, not, not um, be wasteful or be a bad steward. Mm -hmm. I believe that when it comes to money, that when people get the thought in their head that we're blessed to be a blessing, mm -hmm. we're supposed to be rivers, we're not supposed to be dams, it's supposed to flow through us, it's not supposed to just stop with us. Yeah. And when they, when they see that and they, and they accept some of those simple truths and then they go back in their history and they insert those truths in the places where they believe those lies, it shreds the lie. And it's painful to the lie. The truth will hurt that lie and in fact, the truth will actually kill that lie. Hmm. Does that make sense? It does. So what is the challenge that you would leave people with? Because I don't want to just, you know, have this podcast where we bring about a bunch of information, but there's really no like takeaway or something that somebody can learn from it and how to then go about their life. So what would be the challenge to that person that maybe does feel alone mm -hmm. or maybe does feel isolated by some lie or some truth that has been um, brought to the surface recently mm -hmm. that they perceived as being uncomfortable or painful or hurting them, uh, what would you tell you know, that person? I believe that self-awareness is the key, and, and, and I believe that if you break down the areas of your life into those four areas, your relationships, your health, your, your, your personal growth, mental, physical, spiritual um, uh, growth, and then your finances, and then audit yourself. Mm. Go back and where you're not where you want to be, where you have trouble in those four areas, I would go and go, okay, I have trouble losing weight. I have trouble, and I would write these things out. I, I've always had trouble. To, I, it's almost like try to dig and find the lie. Right. So any of those so, areas that you're struggling in, try to figure out where's the lie in here that I'm still believing. Yes, so, so here, here's one with relationships. Everybody always screws me in the end. They're always gonna leave me in the end. Mm. Oh, when did that lie start? Yeah. When did that lie start? Because I have people that are brothers and sisters to the bone that'll be with me and I trust them from here until I shuffle off this earth, mm -hmm. right? Here until it's over for me. I have people like that. And, and so I don't believe that lie. I don't believe that everybody's out to get me or, or, you Well, know, it's the people, I mean, who are the people that get screwed all the time? The people that say they get screwed all the time. The people that say they get screwed And they all wonder the time. why. <laughs> and, and most of the time, those people, I can look at in their life and they justify mm. screwing others 
based off of their past experience of getting screwed. Yeah. And that is hinged and rooted in a lie that you believe. And, and it's, so it's such a power, audit. it's such yeah, a powerful yourself. it's such a powerful and I love that you know we're in the beginning of this year because it's such a powerful way. Like so if you so if you look at all those four areas of your life and figure out where are your weaknesses, where are the areas that you need the most growth, and then literally just start digging through and figuring out, okay, there's a lie in here somewhere, yeah. like with my mind or with my body or with my business or with my relationships. Okay, there, there is a lie in here somewhere that is holding me back from becoming the person that I could be. So what is that? And just start taking yourself through like what are the, like auditing your thoughts around that area. So like money. What are the things that I find myself saying to myself throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month, as it pertains to money? Never going to get ahead. And you'll find it. Like, you'll you'll figure it out. Like, I'm in this hole and I can't get out, which creates isolation, which creates you feeling alone, which creates pain, which creates more of that. That. So if you figure out what that is, then trying to flip it Mm -hmm. and just start literally training your brain by just constantly feeding it with the opposite. Mm -hmm. Um, what's that Jim Rohn? Uh, money will come easily, and what's the thing that he used to write out and write out and write out? Uh, money it's comes. Easy to make money. Money comes. Um, oh man, Nehemiah Davis, who I love, he always has people writing it out like yeah. thousands of times. It's like money will come. Um, it's like basically saying plentiful, like a lot and often. Like, it's, but it's yeah. writing that out, writing that out, writing that out, and thinking that, thinking that, thinking mm-hmm. that, thinking that. And it's just the law of attraction. But it's flipping all those lies. Well, the key, the key with that, Tyler, and I don't mean to get spiritual on on people, but there's a there's a verse that I read and I never really understood it, but it says pray without ceasing. I was like, who can do that? That's just impossible. But then I understood that our our subconscious mm. prays without ceasing. Our mm. subconscious doesn't sleep, it never takes a rest. It's always on go. And the unique thing about the subconscious is it does not know the difference between the truth and a lie. It will act on whatever you tell it. It'll act on that. Whatever gets fed to it, it'll act on that. So people call it the universe. People call it God. People call it whatever they call it. But your subconscious will pray without ceasing the lies that you fed it and will bring more of those into your life or it will do the opposite. It'll, it'll pray without ceasing on, your, on, on the truths and it will bring more of that into your life. It'll, it'll set your scenarios up to, to make true whatever you told it. And I feel like, I mean, this, this seems like it's three podcasts in one, um, but I didn't want to leave this point out. And so many things Joseph says that I end up saying and I just take credit for. And then so many times he'll say something that's similar and then I'll kind of morph it into something where what I'm about to say, I can't remember if you said it or not. <laughs> I do that with everybody. But, but we talk a lot about how negativity is a cancer mm-hmm. because negativity spreads. And if you can put one negative person in a positive group, they will infiltrate that group. And the next thing you know, you've got a group of negative people. Right. That's why you have to cut it. You have to flee from it. And, and that has to do with what we're talking about, with auditing your thoughts. Um, but I did a post the other day where I kind of took this out a, a step further because if you think of negativity as being cancer, then personal responsibility is basically chemotherapy. It kills it. It kills it, but it almost kills you in the process. So if you think about this, chemotherapy will take you through a process where you will almost die in order to save your life. And if you think about that, then that's a good way to set up the fact that it's not going to be easy to do these things. And as you dig and you find these these lies that you're believing, it's not going to be, it's not just a snap of the fingers and like, oh, there's a lie that's now truth. Okay, there's a lie that's now completely, like, it's not going to be easy. But if you think about that negativity, those lies being cancer that are just growing day by day by day, but that taking personal responsibility, taking ownership of those lies, being that chemotherapy that is going to take you to the point where it is going to almost break you in order to rebuild you back up in truth so that you're now this new person that is living in truth and that is a light and and that is cancer-free or 
lie free, negativity free, free. or whatever, that's able to live in truth. And so I don't want people to think that this is some easy process, that it it will be difficult, there Mm -hmm. will be discomfort, but whether you see that discomfort as pain or whether you just see that discomfort as process is going to really set the framework on how you um, tackle this. this, uh, Yeah, how you respond to it. Yeah, how you tackle it. I love it, man. Good deal. So this is episode 101, Sales Wolves 101. As always, (laughs) I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. (laughs) 